Hi everybody, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct and today we're going to show you how to wash an Africam AFA scooter. I have the S model three wheel configuration here and the C model three wheel configuration. I've been using them to make awesome videos which hopefully you've seen because you're subscribed to our channel. If you're not, take this time to go ahead and subscribe because if you do, you're automatically entered into a giveaway. We give away a free mobility scooter several times per year. Check out our last winner which I'm going to throw on the screen for you to watch right now. Got her scooter that we're donating, and all she did was subscribe to our YouTube channel about a year ago. <laughs> it's a godsend that I got this. It's a miracle, really. I needed it desperately. Well, it's, it's something we're really happy to be able to do, Gloria. Thank and, you. And we really appreciate those kind words. And it's pretty easy. All you have to do is subscribe. This is what we're doing here every six months. So if you know somebody else that could use one, please tell them about it. All right. So as you can see, it's that easy. So good luck. Make sure you subscribe and we're going to get started with our video. In order to wash your mobility scooters, you have to be aware of one very important fact. Mobility scooters are not waterproof. So what we're going to be doing is washing the external surfaces carefully, making sure that water does not get in areas where sensitive electronics are and we wanna make sure that we're not gonna leave any water behind that's gonna possibly create any oxidation or rust in the future. You wanna stay away from your steering assembly area, your ignition where the key goes into, or where there's any buttons on the dash because water can get in there. And over time, if there's water or moisture in this steering assembly area where your controls are, you could get rust and things could start to break down. So you wanna be very careful in areas where water can get under the shroud covers, under the body panels, and in the areas where sensitive electronics are. With that being said, I have an air compressor and a shop vac. I also have a regular vacuum cleaner with even smaller attachments. You wanna get a vacuum cleaner with a small, thin attachment to get in those areas and get that dust out. If you're like me and you live out on a farm and you ride your scooter around a lot, it gets dirty. There is debris in areas that I didn't even know these scooters had. So we're gonna start off with one of these scooters. Uh, I'm gonna wash them both and you have to start off by taking the seat off first. So what I'm gonna do is lift up the armrests, fold the seat down and just pick the seat straight up. It is heavy so you might need some help doing so but since we're gonna be working with the hose I'm gonna move this to the side. All right, now that we have the seats off, you can see that on both models, there are seat posts that come up through the main shroud, which is used to cover up the controller and the batteries. There are some nuts here that are little hand turning knob nuts. And over time, you may lose these. If you need to get new replacement knobs for your shroud covers, give us a call. We do sell the parts, but I'm just gonna take them off here and we'll fast forward through this part. All right, so we have the seats completely removed. Now it's time to just remove the shroud covers. So what you wanna do is pick up this entire panel. You wanna grab it firmly from the front and the rear and basically just make sure that this metal clover seat post system doesn't scratch your body panel, which has a nice painted finish to it. So as you can see here, it separates here at the seam right here where my left hand is. I'm picking up carefully and avoiding hitting that seat post system. So I'm just going to put this to the back here and we can actually wash this panel here pretty easily when it's detached from the scooter itself. I'm going to go ahead and rinse and repeat on the C model. So we're going to pick straight up, watch that seat post system to not scratch anything and put it down. Man, that is pretty dirty. All right. So as you can see, the batteries are exposed on both models. Here we have the lithium batteries, which are exclusively available. 
through Mobility Direct. That's right. You can only get lithium battery upgrades when you purchase an Afficam scooter through Mobility Direct and it will not void your warranty. So now that we have the batteries exposed, it's time to remove them. You don't want to have the batteries on when you're going to wash your scooter. Water and batteries are a bad mix. So I'm going to get a little wrench that's going to remove this bolt here, 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 and here. On the C model, we have Phillips head screw on style bolt or terminal connectors. So I'll just get a screwdriver and remove the batteries. We'll be right back with you. So we have the batteries completely removed on both scooters and wow, it is dirty in there. A lot dirtier than I thought. We have been testing these mobility scooters off-road. We have some awesome off-road testing videos where we even tow that F-150 truck with these scooters. So it's pretty awesome. Check them out. And what we're going to do now is just begin to basically start vacuuming out all of this debris. There is a ton of it and that's what we want to do first before we start applying any type of water. So I'm going to get the vacuum, a shop vac would be great, and then afterwards um, we may also use the air compressor to kind of get in some of those small crevices where the vacuum is not getting it, like back in here near the motor, there's some areas that your vacuum may not reach. So an air compressor would do good in some of these crevices to clean everything up really nicely. We want this mobility scooter to shine and we want to be proud of it. So that's what we do, we clean it really thoroughly. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so I've got my four gallon shop vac here and I'm gonna go ahead and just basically get to town on vacuuming out some of that debris. So if you have a shop vac, this is what I would do. Um, you could also use any kind of vacuum cleaner, really. All right, so let's it, let it rip. <laughs> All right, so one thing that I want to point out is there are some little battery mats here for absorption purposes so that your batteries don't kind of rock too heavily or too, uh, you know, roughly on these cradles for the battery. So you want to remove these and then you could pretty much wash these or manually wash them with a uh, car wash glove or a sponge pretty easily. You can also do the same with this floor mat. So I'm going to take the floor mat out and the battery covers out so that we can start to really get underneath those areas where the debris collects and you really can't see it until you remove these covers. Over here we already removed them on the C model when we were vacuuming it out and you'll see that these little floor mats just have these little nipple looking things that slide right into those holes. Pretty easy to remove. So we're going to continue on with vacuuming now that we've shown some other areas where there's a lot of debris that collected, as you can see. All right, so compared to what we had when we first removed the battery covers and batteries, there was tons of debris in the battery compartment areas. So we've used the vacuum, the shop vac, to get most of the heavy amounts of debris out. Now it's time to go in there with a air compressor if you have one to really get a lot of that dust in the areas that the vacuum can't reach out of there. So I'm gonna do just that and we'll fast forward through this part. Thank you. 
All right, so we've uh, vacuumed it out a second time after air compressing it because the air compressor sprayed around a lot of sand and it did kind of get in some of the battery cradle areas. So just to be extra proactive, we did that. I've got some wash and wax formula here. You can use any kind of car wash, form car wash formula. You really don't even need soap, but if you want to get a nice little shine out of it, recommend using a little bit of a car wash soap. We've got our Hose attachment here, I recommend using a hose attachment with an on and off switch or lever like this one. And this one allows you to control the force and the pressure a little bit with that lever. So I've got the lever barely open and I'm gonna fill up my bucket, which happens to be a bait bucket. Shout out to all my fellow fishermen and fisherwomen out there. These mobility scooters make awesome fishing vehicles. By the way, if you do any, uh, land fishing on lakes and you want to go around with some fishing poles i've got some fishing pole attachments that i just clamp on to the back and um, attach it to the rear basket go around fishing it's awesome i love these mobility scooters they are the ultimate off-road scooters and they're very stable come with excellent warranties very easy to repair it's kind of like a big golf cart so highly recommend these scooters and that's why we're making so much content with these scooters now i'm going to get ready to start washing down the scooter and what we need to be careful of is to not get water in any of the areas that are basically like the controller or the controls on top where the dash is you don't really want to get any water near these charging ports or the ignition switches basically you don't want water getting anywhere that it shouldn't be and it should be pretty self-explanatory but just follow along with this video i'm going to lightly spray the areas that are not going to be uh, holding any kind of electrical components now the terminal connectors they can technically get wet but you do want to dry them afterwards and you want to make sure that you connect your batteries the same exact way that they were connected when you took them out so make sure to take a picture use some electrical tape that's uh, different colors to kind of you know color code the wires red and black so that you know they're going to the right place these scooters are waterproof so i mean technically you don't have to be too too careful um, they are rated to go over puddles so they you know, can handle deep, deep puddles going high speeds over them. Uh, we don't recommend doing that too often, but it's nice to know that they can handle it. So I'm just washing her down like a car wash. Go on to the back here, get the back wheels, get all that sand off the tires there. And a little tip here, spray away from the middle part here because in this middle area, You've got the controller under there. You don't really want to have water dripping under there. So I'm kind of spraying outwards when I go from either side. Be careful with those breaker switches there. Those are circuit breaker switches in case you lose power due to overworking the motor. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick spray over the top just to get it a little wet. I don't want to saturate it too, too much. Get underneath here, get the bottom part of the frame a little bit carefully, not to spray too much around the motor there. Spray the back. Be careful there charging ports you don't want to get that wet so just be cautious when you're going in there again the terminal connectors it's not a big deal if they get wet just make sure you dry them thoroughly in fact i would recommend letting your scooter dry out for a couple of hours if you live in the sunny sunny states where it's nice and hot that's even better you can let it dry out for a few hours before you connect your batteries again Notice my sprayer is not on full blast. It's kind of got a light setting to it so as to not get water on that controller, that S drive controller. I don't want to get it too wet um, because the power is not connected. Nothing's going to fry, but they're not waterproof. So just be mindful of that. I am going to turn the speed up a little bit here, point outwards. 
to get the uh, debris out of the tires here. I've been working these scooters for these review videos, so tires are looking pretty dirty. So you get up in the wheel wells where all that dirt likes to kick up. Here too. Turn my air compressor off so it doesn't start making noise. All right, so I have a little uh, rim cleaning tool here, which is really nice to be able to get in these rim areas. So I'm gonna start with the rims, just get in there. Be careful with that uh, nozzle, the air nozzle there. You don't wanna knock it around and get it loose so that it comes out. These are tires with uh, air inflatable tires with tubes in them. So technically you can rip that air nozzle out if you're not careful and then you'll have a leak and it'll be a pain. So just be careful there. This little app, uh, this little tool here is great. I use it on the truck and on the scooters. It gets up in there where the sponge will not. So I'm gonna go ahead and do each tire and we'll fast forward through this part. So now that the tires are all cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and wash the mats for the floorboard and the batteries. All right, so we've cleaned the wheels, we've cleaned the floor mats, we've sprayed it all down, we've air compressed it. It's pretty dust free at this point, but we wanna make it shine. So we're gonna start off with the S model and I've got my car wash glove and I'm just doing what I would normally do, like a car wash. I'm just getting in all the areas, making sure this thing is gonna be really nice and clean when I'm done. So we'll fast forward through this part. There's really nothing to it. We've already gotten through the hard parts, so. Just go ahead, take your time, as much time as you want, depending on how bad your OCD is and how bad you want this thing to shine, results may vary. Again, remember not to get water to sit on the dash. You don't want to have that dash saturated with water because if water gets in these control areas, it could be bad. Also stay away from the charging ports. I'm just going up here a little bit, not all the way. And at the end, when you're done, those areas that you miss, you can get with a paper towel, maybe saturated with a little W, I'm sorry, saturated with a little Windex, not WD-40. Um, WD-40 actually is a water repellent, stands for water deterrent. So if you use WD-40 on any metal parts that you think can rust over time, it's actually a great idea and recommended. You can also use T9, which is a anti-corrosion spray made by Boeing, the aircraft company, very high quality stuff. It's what I use on any of my expensive electronics that I don't want to rust over time. So you may want to consider getting a bottle of that. I'm getting underneath the wheel well here where a lot of mud tends to accumulate as you're driving and the wheels kicking up. Get underneath the frame because dirt definitely gets kicked up there too. 
getting everywhere. All the panels, all the surfaces. Like I said, we want to make this thing shine and be proud of it. Alright, so the first scooter has been washed with soap. Don't want to let the soap dry and create soap spots. So I'm going to rinse this one down and then move on to the other model. Now again, these are some of the most rain resistant models on the market. So if you do get a little bit of water on the dash, it's okay. It's not gonna break it. Just try and not get a waterfall or tsunami of water on the dash. So we've washed off the S model completely, minus the battery compartment. We're gonna do the battery compartment next and then move on to the C model. So we'll fast forward through this part, enjoy. So something that you'll notice is the underside of these battery compartment covers can get pretty dirty with mud, especially if you're riding off road and it's kicking up into the underside of this thing. So I'm gonna carefully place it down here on the floor. It might help to put it on a rag so that you don't scratch it, but basically you can clean underneath that as well to get that looking really clean and keep any debris away from your body panels. Alright, so to save time and not make this video super long, I went ahead and washed down the C model in the same way that we washed down the S model just now. So should be able to do that without watching the process. Again, these are two pretty much the same models, one's just bigger than the other. So we washed down the other one and what I wanted to do now was I'm using a uh, microfiber cloth here and what I'm going to do is lightly spray the dash area and the controls like we talked about earlier because I never actually really took the, um, the sponge and the soap and the water to the dash. It's a little dusty. So I'm just gonna use some Windex, spray down this top part, and get it shiny. We'll fast forward through this part, but this is what we recommend doing um, to get that dash nice and shiny. All right, so they're both washed down pretty thoroughly at this point, and what you can do now is, if you aren't in a state where it's really hot out and it's gonna take a while to dry, you could wipe them down with some uh, chamois or these microfiber cloths work great. And I'm gonna do that because I really just wanna make sure that we don't get any water stains um, from the water drying out. Kinda makes the, uh, the wash job not look so great. So. I'm just wiping her down, getting all the water droplets out. Now you may notice some water gets in the headlight and we are gonna make a separate video that shows you how to take this thing apart completely so that you can get in there and just wipe out some of that excess water that got in the headlight assembly. Um, don't worry though, that's not gonna do anything like damage the uh, headlights. So it's perfectly fine. Just, you may want to, if there's a lot of water in there, eventually wash that out. I would like to point out these cup holders are removable. So if you have a lot of water in them, just pop them out, tip them over. And then you could just get in there with the towel, dry it off. All right, so I'm just gonna wipe down Especially in these battery compartment areas, we want to make sure it's nice and dry. Uh, you 
can definitely use a shop vac if you want to get that water out. Um, you can also use your air compressor to kind of air dry it. Um, I'm just using these chamois for now, and then I'll probably take my air compressor to come back and really dry it off afterwards. All right, so just about wrapping up my initial drying job here to just get some of that excess water that's piled up in those crevices dried up. Now, what I'm gonna do is, believe it or not, air compressor or even a leaf blower works great to dry it out even further, so I'm gonna do that. All right, so like I said, I've got my DeWalt electric leaf blower here and just like a car wash when you drive out at the end the big fans dry you off we're going to dry off the scooter with this leaf blower and then possibly get in there with the air compressor to get some of the areas around the motor and the controller so we'll show you how we do that and enjoy <laughs> All right, so we've dried off the scooters with a paper towel. We blow dried them. Now I've got my air compressor and I wanna do something here that I feel is really helpful and important. On your controller, these connectors can come out and I recommend taking them out. And if you don't have an air compressor, what you can do is let them air dry, but you wanna get the water out of there because you've washed it. There could be water in the connectors you want to let them either air dry, get a leaf blower, even a bro dryer for your hair and just dry these connectors out and don't connect your batteries until you feel they are thoroughly dried out. So at this point, I've thoroughly dried out the connectors for the controllers, the circuit breakers, the terminal connectors for the batteries. And again, take your time. Do not rush this process. You want to let this thing dry out thoroughly. So if you want, just leave it out in the sun and let it cook for about an hour or two if you can afford to, depending on where you're located. If not, maybe use a dehumidifier or a portable AC unit in a small room so that it can evaporate all of that moisture out of those areas. That's what you really want to focus on. So at this point, we've dried it out pretty thoroughly. I also want to point out the electromagnetic brake levers that are attached to the right side of the motor. You want to dry that out pretty thoroughly too, if you can afford to with a uh, air compressor. At this point, I'm going to get the batteries ready to install and basically just begin rebuilding the scooters. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is get ready to install the batteries. The batteries were kind of dirty too, and you don't want dirty batteries when you have a really clean scooter. It just doesn't look good. So I'm gonna clean the batteries off just a bit here with some dry paper towels. Do not wet your batteries. Batteries should not get wet, and that should be pretty self-explanatory, but hey, this is an educational video, so I will mention it. All right, so I've uh, put the mats back on. I put the batteries back together. Just make sure you connect the batteries the same exact way they were connected previously, and you'll be good to go. Um, the floor mats themselves, I will point out, at some point they become pretty worn out. They get weathered, and they're not gonna look brand, brand new. Uh, as you can see, they are a little worn out here, uh, but they are clean. You can order brand new ones if you are the type that wants your ride to look brand new and uh, we do sell them on our website. We have a whole parts department dedicated to helping you find compatible parts. So I'm gonna, at this point, just go ahead and start rebuilding the scooter by first attaching the body panel here on the S model, being careful. 
to make sure that it goes, the uh, seat post assembly goes right through the shroud without scratching anything. And just go ahead and get those hand bolts out and start reconnecting everything. It's pretty straightforward. And we'll fast forward through this part. All right, so now that the scooters are dry and the battery compartment covers are on, it's time to put the seat back on. And you should already be familiar with this part, but there is a male connection point underneath the seat in the middle, which slides right into that female connection point coming out of the middle of the battery compartment. So just carefully line up that connector, drop it in. Now you will want to pick up a little bit and then engage the rotation lever so that it locks into place. The seat itself doesn't usually get too dirty, but you could wipe it down with a little damp cloth. I recommend just using a wet cloth. Don't use any chemicals that could potentially harm the faux leather. These scooters have plenty of seat options to choose from, which is one of the reasons why I love the Afikims. You can even get a dual wide seat for the S model for two people. All right, so I'm gonna turn the brakes back on. We disengaged the brakes earlier to freewheel the scooters around. And if you look at them, they are pretty clean aside from the seats, which will give them a little wipe down, but essentially the hard part is over. The mobility scooters are clean. So we'll go ahead and conclude this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section below. We love hearing from our audience. Again, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. Before you go, please don't forget to visit our website, mobilitydirect.com and click on the green button that says free catalog to claim your very own free catalog. Just fill out the short form and it should get to you in about a week or two max. I just want to take this time to personally thank each and every one of you for watching this video. We couldn't do it without our subscribers. So if you like our content, please go to YouTube, search for Mobility Direct, and subscribe to our channel. You can enable notifications. That way you'll get notified whenever we release new videos. We're constantly making great videos. We have tons of playlists that range from repair videos, unboxing videos, research and development, and much, much more. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and ask any questions in the comments section below. We love hearing from our audience, whether it's feedback, comments, or suggestions for a new video topic, we love hearing from you. None of this could be done without our loyal audience. We hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching again. Have a great day.